Gary, we've come to another farm here now in southwest of Scotland. Um, it's a rotary project yep. on, a, on a large scale farm. Could you describe what we have here? Yeah, so uh, we're at the uh, Balmangan Farms uh, in southwest Scotland. Uh, we've, he's been a customer of ours for the last eight years. Um, he has a 72 stall Bomatic Streamline. Um, it has everything on it as such as far as touchscreens, iCar approved milk meters. Um, he's milking a large number of cows. He's milking, at the moment, 1,600 to 1,700 cows three times a day with aspirations to go further up even into over 2,000 cows. Um, leaders at the minute are sitting in around, on average, 36 litres a cow and they have good fertility rates. He has heat detection systems on the leg um, as well for checking fertility. So it's a, one, of our, our, sorry, one of our largest customers as such. So this is an indoor system? Yeah, cows don't go out, so it's a lot of conserved feed. Yeah, it's an indoor, it's an indoor system for the milking herd. You do see some of the cows out in the fields here, but uh, for the milking side, it's indoor system, and the, the feed is brought to them. So there's been a real push over the last number of years as far as cow comfort, cow health, making sure that they have the right, right uh, bedding, bedding, the feeds brought to them. But yes, all of it at the moment is a, uh, all of it at the moment is feed, uh, which is all on their own farm as such. Okay, so look, we we'll go in and have a look at the machine. Um, look at some of the technology there, look at the collecting yard and uh, we have some footage before the cows come in so we'll try and intermix it there to make it interesting. Yeah, no, so no let's problem. go have a look. Okay, so into the collecting yard we go, What? it's a big collecting yard. Yeah, it's the collecting yard's designed for um, around 380 cows so it's a, it's a, a 50 feet wide and then it's a, from top to bottom is a hundred and 40 feet, I believe, off memory with it. Yeah. Um, and then with with our with, we designed the backing gate uh, as again with one of the other videos that we had done with yourselves. It's the finger tight one to funnel cows in. So yeah. really, once the, the operator or once the guys bring the cows into here, he has a remote control section at the back of the building. He can drop the gate, move it back and forward to get it in the right position. Then the rotary actually automatically indexes the backing gate forward with the cows. So as we know, we've, we count. 10 cows bring the backing gate forward a little bit. Again, one of the things you have to be careful of with that is with the backing gate, because it's such a large group and it, it's, it's busy all the time, we actually put a function into that backing gate. Whenever we bring the cows forward, we actually reverse the backing gate off for two seconds. Every time it goes forward for 10, it reverses for two, right. just if the cows are getting tight to not yeah. push them up. Yes. And another door access here for, I presume, cows from the back. Yeah. The fresh group, is it? Fresh food coming in as well, access is key, like even, you know, to bring, you know, you know this, the, it's a tractor that scrapes this, um, and even if they have to get up to the road tree for a cow or yeah. something like that, they can they can access everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so we look at the approach, you don't have a drafting, a pre-drafting area here in this? Yep, so uh, again, there's no, uh, no pre-drafting, just because everything's managed in groups, um, so if there is a cow that is unwell, it gets moved into a a hospital group that can be more managed by people and they, at the end brings them together and they're not they're not being they're not in the run of the mill as far as just get milk go back to their cubicle you know they're a lot more taken care of whenever they're in that group okay um, again you can see the funnel here with the finger type gate so really we're talking about where the gate stops you know there'll only be three cows left in the collecting yard where a traditional backing gate would be stopping yeah, at this corner, corners, yeah. and you're talking 30, 40 cows in this area, especially with how wide it is. Yeah. So the approach for the cow in as she goes in then on the platform, it does an angle on it. Why is there an angle on it? Angle on it, anything up to ten, anything up to ten degrees off center point is ideal for a cow walking on, for walking on straight. Anything more than that, if like if the entrance was over at this point, the cow has a bend to do whenever she's stepping onto the rope tree. So uh, it's partly to do with the reason where, where it's situated at, it's partly to do with we wanted to have a nice open exit area, which we'll see, but also on the entrance, it's, it's, it's to funnel more instead of putting them into right. one corner, it's to funnel them more into the centre. So as the cow exits, she has possibly a bit more room as she's turning. Yeah, exactly. With the angle you've created. So I suppose access squeeze gaps here? Yep, uh, everywhere, you know, as far as like, you know, as said, you know, for safety of people and just that you can get in and out. Yeah. Gary, we're standing here beside the, the backing gate. It's a big steel structure. Yeah. I think that this one here is 50 feet. Yeah. I think you, you said you're, re you're going to be shortly doing one at 60 feet. Um, just describe maybe the functionality here and what the various parts are doing. So again, with our, uh, with our backing gates, like we can keep going wider 
like we, I, I would have no problems going up to even 75 feet wide if we had to. And we build a, a lattice frame structure front and back, and then we have another set of frames above which stabilise the whole unit. Um, and then basically the two carriages on the outside are, are tying it together, the other bit that's, bits that move. And then the centre section that we lift this up in one piece whenever we're on site. So basically it's in two parts. You've got the centre section that drops down to bring the cows forward and then the actual frame that holds it all together. Yeah. What's rotating? What, is it a ram or is it an electric motor again that's controlling the rise and fall of that? Everything on the gate's hydraulic. So yeah. the, uh, the rams are big hydraulic rams that lift the gate up and down. And actually how we move it up and down the collecting yard is hydraulic. So instead of it being wheels, that are driving it up the collecting yard. The wheels are only there to get it to roll. What we have is a continuous chain the whole yeah. way down both sides, yeah. and it's a sprocket that actually pulls it up. It, it claws over the claws right. over the sprocket. So, uh, nice thing about that is it never gets out of line. Yeah. Um, but the other big one is is that with it being hydraulic, we can have pressure release valves. So if we feel that it's getting too tight in the cow, we can drop the pressure down, and they, then it'll not push the cow any further. Any idea the weight of that that spans across there? I know, I know whenever we were putting it up we had to use uh, two tally handlers because the first one wouldn't lift it off the ground so you're going to be talking about the full weight of it probably until five ton I would think yeah, something okay. around that yeah no very good so so one of the things that say uh, on, on the Bomatic the set on the on the bigger rotaries is a, a feed entrance so you can see here we have a it's, it's feed more gives the cow a bit more room that's whenever she's stepping on it's just not a single gap it's they've got like a gap and a half to go on again id uh, id for this one is just on the edge of the deck where the where the cow's foot is so as she's walking she's already committed where she gets id'd onto the rotary and um, the id is on the on the leg is it exactly yeah. okay not the ear not the ear everything's okay. done on one one tag so okay. that's uh, that's where that comes from as such right. the antenna is just underneath the rubber here right are these safety features then these Yep, uh, safety is so with this gate, it's it's not it's not actually to do with the cows coming on. Although it will, if it if it went the other way, it would still stop the rotary. It's more cows that are half backed off that they're not getting caught. They're independent of each other. I know some manufacturers have them tied, but we use them as two independent gates, two independent sensors. So if the cow gets on this one, um, it'll stop, and you can reverse on this one. Then if it goes either way, it'll stop the it'll stop the rotary. And um, there is auto start functions. So if a the cow brushes past it like that it'll not stop the rotary or it'll it'll keep going so okay. there's a lot of features in this side of it. cow safety is paramount with it like you don't want to hurt any cows coming on right okay so in terms of feeding what's the functionality of the feeding or what options have you uh, f on the feeding it's a f so because we have id we have full feed to yield functionality on it um obviously because we're managing in groups and different different on this farm and different a uh, rations per group we don't need to use the feed to yield just as crucial as what you know somebody running as one complete group highs and lows all together. Um, so at the moment we're running we're running as more of a batch type feeding system. So each each group gets a certain ration, but it's all the same ration um, as such. So we have this shield here, keep the cows away from where the the feeder is, and it dumps behind it. So cows come in very settled they do, they, and they're not disrupted by the feed dropping in. How many different feed stuffs could you feed through that system? We only have set up for, for one feed type at the moment, but you can put two feed types through it. Yeah. Okay. Stainless troughs. Stainless, yeah, stainless troughs, uh, stainless troughs, stainless slobber shields um, is all is, is, is in all of it. Um, again, stainless steel at the bottom side for doing the uh, for for doing the drains as well down into the centre. Um, we have rails right round here for obviously protecting the cow. The nice thing about our, our rotary is whenever the cows are eating, they can see directly across the rotary. So that's what the top rail is for, just to stop them if they do decide to have a jump um, okay. to go out. All these rails here, there's a lot of rails? Yeah, the reason for the lot of rails, we, whenever we first installed, we found that cows were, particularly in the feeding, I think it was more to do with the feeding because, you know, obviously large bomatic rotaries in the States would predominantly not have feeding on them. And what we were finding was, especially in the smaller cows, we're stepping forward to get feed out of the troughs. So what we done was we added this rail on because it wasn't that they couldn't reach, it just was more comfortable for them to go right up close to the, the trough. So we added this rail, stepped them back, they have to stretch a little bit, but for the operator, for attaching, it okay. keeps the cow further back so yeah. that they're not reaching underneath the rump rail. Okay, the platform is falling forward. 
you have platforms falling forward, two sets of drains. We have a set of drains on the inside that go into the drain system, so that's predominantly more your dirty water. All bomatic dacks fall inwards and take the water away, and then you have a drain on the outside, which is more for your washing down of the concrete. Right, okay. So we go down into the operator area there to see some of the functionality there. Yeah. So Gary, we're on the cup, cups on side here now. Yep. Um, could you explain what we see here on the left? Yeah, so we have a, just a pre-spray. It's just a very a very simple one. It's not like a, a fully robotic sprayer. It uh, just basically comes in and out, puts on a, a, a very cheap and cheerful spray just to get the cow's teeth swept, a wee bit of disinfectant, and then basically we'll have a person wiping and then round, which seems quite a far way away, is where the person puts cups on. Um, cups on, we're looking for around about minute 20 to minute 30, as far as to let the oxytocin release from the cow's udder, um, or release to the cow's udder, and then attach. So it does seem quite a distance, but with how many cows this rotary and how fast it can go, um, that's basically a minute and a half over to, over to that point. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's unusual. I suppose maybe some viewers would say it's a long way away to brand the cups. Yeah. But it's all with good intention for a high yielding cow. All good intention for a high yielding cow. You will see though, whenever we're milking, like the cows still are finished over pretty much two thirds of the rotary. So like, you know, what you get, what you lose, what people think you're losing in the prep routine as far as mil the milking time, you're gaining back because you don't have that first two minutes of low flow in the cow. Okay, yeah. So the cows are making three times a day, so when the cups go on, say, and it's nearly a quarter away, the first quarter, when are they typically finished in on the, on the other side? They'd be, if you're saying quarter, it would be, most of them would be done around three quarters there yeah. on the other side. Um, yeah. And I said this road is run at about 400 cows an hour and around right. that sort of figure. Okay. So explain what we see here. I suppose we've seen a couple of these now at this stage. Yep. So uh, Duncan wanted his configuration. He has a touchscreen at the start of the parlor and a touchscreen at the end. At the moment, the reason why it's turned like this is instead of towards the rotary, we have the wash screen. So any of the operators going past can see if a unit's not been put in their jetter correctly and they can see how many fills and dumps the units have done. If there was a problem with a washing, it would come up with a dark blue line on the stall unit so they can just go around to it and have a look and see what's wrong. Okay, and on the far side here then, what's it? What? Far side here, we have the, the controls for the rotary. So you can start, start and stop the vacuum pumps uh, we can start and stop the uh, feeder from here uh, and we can do the manual milk pump outs at the end of milking and the air purges all from this controller and then to the other side of it's the backing gate controls. Yeah, it's simple, it's not complicated looking. Not a complicated, small panels, we, you know, with, with Pomatic and all the rotaries, um, the panels out at here all link back to the main controller in the, in the engine room, so again, trying to keep the electronics out of the face of where water and manure and stuff is, keep it, keep it simple. Okay. Any controls in the corner room here? No, or there's no, nothing. Nothing in here. What this is is a staff room. Yeah. Um, a, a staff room, and they have lockers, and then this is a, a toilet area in here. Right. Okay. So let's have a look at the floor over here. So I'll explain what's happening here. Yep. So the handy floor, the handy floor was uh, put in after, um, just with the cow numbers going up, um, and operators obviously in different heights with fatigue. Um, we wanted to give a way that a small operator could lift the lift lift up to, to attach, and then a taller operator could go down to attach. So this this handy floor can go up and down. It gives about 12 inches of variation, so it really compensates for any anyone's height with that. Um, I'll just I'll show you yeah. here with it working. Hello. Hi. So that's as far as you go down? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you have a ramp in for safety, is it? Just yeah, just a ramp in for safety, just yeah. for people walking in and out of it. Yeah. So again, like, you know, uh, that we, we reckon at that height, that's, you know, I said, because we've got some uh, staff that are quite tall here, like that could be six foot six, you know, something like that for some of the, the guys there. Okay. So how do you manage drainage in an area like that then? So as I said, this was actually retrofitted. Um, if you go to our uh, if you go to our Facebook page, you see it at these stages. So we broke out this concrete. We actually dug a hole 
and um, what there is is that we made a we, normally these tanks would be precast into this area of the rotary and then the handy floor installed afterwards but because we had to do it a retrofit we actually built a stainless steel tank set it in and concreted right around it so the actual drain for this is a is actually in, in the bottom here at, in the bottom of it and what we actually tied into there's drainage points right around the rotary so we actually picked a point where there was a drain to tie into gravity gravity yeah, yeah all no, gravity. Pumps. no pumps no yeah. pumps okay so is that electric motors or is it like a car jack how it lifts up and down or so it's actually it's it's on a set of chains um and two electric two electric motors either side so the electric motors never get the electric motors are never get anywhere close to water and basically they lift up and down it's all 24 volt um but it's the chains doing the work basically through it okay you might lift it the other way so to show the, yeah. what it can do the other yeah. direction It's this one stops at level because of the the deck the deck in this the deck in this rotary was put in a little low at the time you know we, we weren't just sure of what yeah. way it was put in 96 centimeters yeah. so they, like Duncan was saying like for a five foot five person it's fine yeah but for tall people it's not yeah good enough so, so he wanted to go down yeah he, he fair enough. it could down. go up if you want yeah oh yeah, yeah you just yeah. adjust it it can go up yeah if you want it to fair enough it's a handy feature yeah again I suppose. Milking long hours, yep. for operator comfort. It's it's, it's, it's a feature it's, for that. Yeah, it's paramount for that. Like you know, the guys. I know they move around in their shifts as far as the different positions on the rotary. But whenever you're attaching and not actually moving for a two-hour period, you know, operator fatigue. So it's it's purely. This was put in just purely for operators to stop fatigue doing okay. their job. Yeah. Gary, we're looking at something different here. Can you explain what what's happening here? Yeah, so it's an automatic foaming unit for cleaning the rotary down. So we have three nozzles set up um, and basically once, once a month, I think really we use it here, is that we can switch it on, turn the rotary nice and slow and it basically foams the whole rotary the same way a car. Um, it's a specialist cleaning product from Bomatic and uh, basically covers the whole rotary. It softens down any manure that would be stuck on. Um, and then basically the operator at the other side on the on the bridge would basically power hose it off then to have time to settle into it by the Let time it we get it, it won't like it's not a it's not a miracle cure it'll not come up perfect as far as like spotlessly clean it still needs a little bit of elbow grease but it loosens anything, anything that's stuck on off and i guess it's the advantage of having the electronics in the inside that you're not spraying individual units here yeah, yeah. everything that you see here can be power hosed volume washer a uh, put on foam everything can go over everything yeah. here okay. scary we're moving over here now to the cups off position yep um, um what are we seeing here so cups, cups off position again we have another touch screen so that operators on both sides of the parlor can see a uh, see what's happening with the cows in the deck in reality it's really if there's something needs altered or if a cow needs sorted the same as what we've seen at the herc or at the last farm Basically, they can sort cows from here, they can check cows from here, um, and basically they have fun functionality. Then it's, it's easy to go into the office if they need to get something as well for the cows. But uh, on this side, there's no automatic sprayer, it's still a person here, and uh, they're, they're spraying, checking cows, and letting them go, letting them go then. Okay. Um, again, you, you will see around the rotary, there is quite a lot of room, uh, and that's not by chance, or it was designed that way. Again as robotics comes on and there's robotic sprayers and prep robots and attached robots the thought is is that we can just slip them in and leave the room wide so we can get them installed easily yeah fair enough and a nice office area here with plenty of windows looking out to yeah nice nice office one of the things i like about the the feature here was to have it raised so that you actually have steps up so through the windows you're looking out over the rotary and you can see the cows on the rotary yeah. um, the computer there allows you to check herd records um, sort cows uh, you can calve cows off that again it's all linked through the Wi-Fi network as well so like you can do it from your phone and then obviously uh, that that's the operational side of the dairy here but also there's offices and they can also log into it as well if yeah. they need to yeah 